Hey guys, I'm Gwyneth Merla from Grade 8 Almond and I'm here to talk about replication, transcription, and translation of the DNA, RNA, and amino acids. First, let's start with replication. Each time a cell divides, each of its double strands of DNA splits into two single strands. Each of these single strands acts as a template for a new strand of complementary DNA. As a result, each new cell has its own complete genome. This process is known as DNA replication. The leading strand is synthesized continuously, but the opposite strand is copied in short bursts of about 1,000 bases as the lagging strand template becomes available. The resulting short strands are called Okazaki fragments. Bacteria have at least three distinct DNA polymerases. Pol1, Pol2, and Pol3 that is largely involved in chain elongation. Pol3 can then take over, but it eventually encounters one of the previously synthesized short RNA fragments in its path. At this point, Pol1 takes over using its 5' prime to 3' prime exonuclease activity to digest the RNA and fill the gap with DNA until it reaches a continuous stretch of DNA. This leaves a gap between the 3' prime end of the newly synthesized DNA and the 5' prime end of the DNA previously synthesized by Pol3. The gap is filled by DNA ligase, an enzyme that makes a covalent bond between a 5' prime phosphate and a 3' prime hydroxyl group. Next, we'll tackle about RNA transcription. Transcription is the process by which DNA is copied or transcribed to mRNA, which carries the information needed for protein synthesis. Transcription takes place in two broad steps. First, the premessenger RNA is formed with the involvement of RNA polymerase enzymes. The process relies on watson quick base pairing, and the resultant single strand of RNA is the reverse complement of the original DNA sequence. The premessenger RNA is then edited to produce the desired mRNA molecule in a process called RNA splicing. The mechanism of transcription has parallels in that of DNA replication. As with DNA replication, partial unwinding of the double helix must occur before transcription can take place, and it is the RNA polymerase enzymes that catalyze this process. The mRNA produced in transcription is a copy of the sense strand, but it is the anti-sense strand that is transcribed. Ribonucleotide triphosphates, or NCPs, align along the anti-sense DNA strand with watson crick base pairing, or A pairs with E. RNA polymerase joins the ribonucleotides together to form a premessenger RNA molecule that is complementary to a region of the anti-sense DNA strand. Transcription ends when the RNA polymerase enzyme reaches a triplet of bases that is read as a stop signal. The DNA molecule rewinds to reform the double helix. Lastly, we'll discuss about RNA translation. The mRNA formed in transcription is transported out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm and into the ribosome or the cell's protein synthesis factory. Here it directs protein synthesis. Messenger RNA is not directly involved in protein synthesis. Transfer RNA or tRNA is required for this. The process by which mRNA directs protein synthesis with the assistance of tRNA is called translation. The ribosome is a very large complex of RNA and protein molecules. Each three-base stretch of mRNA or triplet is known as a codon, and one codon contains the information for a specific amino acid. As the mRNA passes through the ribosome, each codon interacts with the anticodon of a specific tRNA molecule by, what, by watson crick base pairing. This tRNA molecule carries an amino acid at its 3' prime terminus, which is incorporated into the growing protein chain. The tRNA is then expelled from the ribosome. That's all for this podcast.
Let us know if this helped you learn a thing or two about replication, transcription, and translation. Also, leave a like for this vi video if this helped you a lot and enjoyed watching me talk. Bye!